Remember when Studio Dean was making gay baiting anime? Do you remember that time that Studio Dean made uh, Initial D third stage? Remember that time Initial D made Super Lovers? Initial D, <laughs> <laughs> Initial D made Super Lovers? No, that would be great. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to Anime Club After Dark, the podcast that delves into all things anime, manga, and otaku culture related. I'm your host, Alex, but you can call me Senpai, and joining me tonight, I have our czar of source material, John. It's like God didn't want us to record today. If if, if y'all knew the amount of, like, finagling and, like, just bullshit we've gone through over the last, what, hour and a half trying to get our audio shit right? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hey, we were supposed to start at 2. It is now four. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Um. I also have a stream supposed to be starting here directly, but that's not going to happen now. Yep. R. I. P. Sorry for R. I. P. Te- that stream. Sorry for technical difficulties. Like I'm serious. God Himself came down and it's like, no, we're not recording today. Like, all right, it's the last episode that we're going to do for the year, but okay, whatever. Yeah, it is the last episode that we're doing this year. So, um, first and foremost, um, happy New Year, everybody. <laughs> Um, so it's also since it is the end of the year that means a new anime season is about to start the winter 2022 season and that is what you and i are going to be here to discuss tonight john um natai was supposed to join us but eh (laughs) i guess it's just you and me yeah and then there were two and then there were two yeah (laughs) um but we are going to talk, we're going to hit on pretty much everything I think that most of you guys are out there are looking forward to in this uh, upcoming season of anime. So I'm going to hit it off uh, firstly with, I think, an anime that everyone, th- that needs no introduction at this point, I think. Um, I'm going to be talking about Demon Slayer. Uh, it's an uh, entertainment district arc that's coming out. So um, earlier this year, um, or I starting in uh, October, I think, we had a television version of the uh, Mugen Train, Infinity Train arc that came out. So it was like re- re-edited. The movie itself was re-edited for television and, and like broadcast on TV. And then also one of the episodes, the first one, I think, or what is it, the second one? I can't remember now. Uh, one of them had like completely new content that wasn't in, in the movie itself, um, which is cool. I mean, that's great. But now we have this. We have the uh, the entertainment arc district or entertainment district arc coming out. Jesus, easy for me to say. Um, it's actually as of the time of this recording. And actually, I'll say this: as of the time of when this will come out, there will be four episodes of this arc already out because it began airing on December fifth. But the majority of it is going to air into uh, winter twenty twenty two. Also, the first episode of this was like almost an hour long. So Woo! Uh, good. <laughs> Good job on that. I, I I like I'd like you know one thing I've noticed recently is that anime studios are becoming increasingly comfortable with this idea of like hour long opening episodes. Dude, imagine the day that we get like hour long, twelve episode, thirteen episode seasons. Like I know, right? <laughs> it's like it's like they're trying to mimic Western television because that's how long our shows are in the West. <laughs> like mm-hmm. a bunch of TV shows are an hour long. Like well, well forty five minutes long. Yeah, I mean, most, like, TV dramas in the U.S., uh, at least, are anywhere between that 45 to 50-minute mark, yeah. Um, to, I Listen, I'm all for it. I, if, if it's good shit, I'm all here for it if they're going to have the long run times. Um, I do like how that even with the few episodes that are already out, this has already garnered some controversy, so good job. Um, <laughs> I, for, for some reason, a bunch of people are super upset to the fact that one of the main characters in this arc, um, Uzi, or Uzui. Uzi is <laughs> fucking named Uzi. after a gun. <laughs> um, Uzui has, like, multiple wives. And I'm like, fucking get wrecked. You're just sad not even a single girl will talk to you. Yeah, like, every anime season, there's always got to be some controversy. Some, something stupid, right? Like, mm. this is anime. First and foremost, this is anime. Like, 
they can depict it's a cartoon it's a cartoon that takes place in supposedly like medieval japan right no not, not medieval yeah. like turn of the century japan yeah, i know really. i know but like it's fantasy world first and foremost and second off it's like yeah i don't think like it's a problem at all so polygamy to me i don't think it's a bad thing inherently like if you want to let's get political with anime club after dark <laughs> Well, I mean, just, like, I don't understand. Why can't you just, if you want to have multiple spouses, why can't you? I never understood, like... That's a great question. The reason, I don't understand why either. Like, yeah, I I, I mean, I, I get why, because, you know, America, herder, bad, polygamy, bad, herder, sex, bad. Like, I get that. The ev- evangelicalists? Is that... Evangelists. Evangelists? Like, I get that that's why we can't have it, right? Because they're like, oh, no, that's, like, against the Bible or something, and... That's why America is so hard pressed against polygamy. But if people are, if you are in a relationship and they're all down for it, I don't understand why it's a problem. And clearly, they don't have a fucking problem with it. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> um, it's also like I see it both ways too. Like it could be a, a man with multiple wives, a woman with multiple husbands, a, or a one with both. both. Yeah, I don't like, care. Exactly. Like, I, what's I don't understand why it's a problem in the first place, and I don't know why people care so much about it. But I don't. I also thought it was kind of weird that they released the um, the episodes early. I don't know why they would do that. Maybe because they were trying to follow the hype of uh, like they just because they released Mugen Train on TV. They're like, all right, we got to follow the yeah. hype. Like we can't let them wait too long. It's 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 an interesting like. Um... I don't know what you would call it. It's an interesting release schedule because they're they're stopping short of calling this a new season, really. Be- as far as I know, none of the marketing has ever referred to this as a new season. It's just a story arc. So I'm wondering if, like, going forward with Demon Slayer, this is how they're going to release everything, just in story arcs, not as actual seasons. I mean, in the, like, source, each, each like, uh, arc is uh, basically, a like, a novel, you know? Like, like mm-hmm. how a novel of a book would be considered a season of anime. You know what I'm saying? More or less, yeah. Like, every volume of a light novel is technically an arc. Like, there's, like, in Overlord, for example, there's three arcs inside of Overlord's 12 animes episodes. There's three volumes, three arcs. But... Yeah. I don't know, man. It's an interesting release schedule. And the fact that they actually just basically re-edited Mugen Train for TV just kind of really befuddles. I was, I was really confused about that at first because when this came out, I'm like, so is this going to be just the whole second season? It's just the Mugen Train arc all over again. <laughs> like, why would you even bother releasing this as a movie if your plans were to put this in, on TV? Obviously, just to generate more hype. Like, hey, remember like how we smashed the fucking box office with this crazy good movie and you guys really wanted more Demon Slayer? Yeah, like, remember, do you guys remember how this was, like, the most successful movie of 2020? And, like, it was the first time a non-Hollywood movie ever got the top grossing movie? Also, remember when I was like, hey, man, this thing called Demon Slayer is going to be fucking hype? Did I fucking lie? (laughs) (laughs) Man. But, honestly, that's really I'm I'm super hype. I mean... I, have you watched any of the, the episodes that have come out yet? No, I don't watch anime. <laughs> 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 um, I have, and it's it's pretty damn good so far. Um, so I'm looking forward to this continuing into uh, into the new year. Um, sadly, I don't think this is going to be eligible for... I, I know it won't be eligible for anything that we do for our award show coming up uh, later in uh, 2022. So that's a shame. But it will be eligible for our 2022 award show, so uh, that'll be cool. Anyway, yeah, I mean, it, there's nothing, not too much else to say about it. I mean, I think everyone and their mother knows all about um, Demon Slayer at this point, and it's still the same studio, it's still affordable. They haven't paid their taxes yet, uh, <laughs> <laughs> which is insane considering how successful the movie fran- or how successful Demon Slayer has been. Like, pay your goddamn taxes, man. I'm I'm sure you're out <laughs> of the red now, right? Right. So I I found out something recently because I read an article. That, so the the head of Studio Affordable apparently it's his like wife that does all the finances for the for the studio. Like great job, man. 
she just like doesn't believe in taxes or something. I I guess <laughs> she she's literally fucking Mr. House from New Vegas. No, she, why did you kill him? <laughs> he asked me to pay taxes. Understandable. <laughs> she's just like fucking a don't tread on me flag outside of her office. Like <laughs> taxation, taxation without is representation is death. <laughs> I don't know, ufotable and tax evasion just kind of, kind of goes together at this point like peanut butter and jelly. I don't know why, but it does. I wonder if they paid less in the fees for avoiding to pay taxes than they would in taxes. You might have a point there, but I still think with how... Anyway, I'm not going to get into Japanese legal shit. Um, but yeah, I, I'm hyped for it. I know a ton of other people are hyped for it, and like it's fucking Demon Slayer, man. It's the biggest thing going, or one of the biggest things going right now in in anime. So it's hard to complain when anything comes out. Yeah, like I would say Demon Slayer would be a great contender to be part of the new big three, but it ends. Mm. <laughs> it's not forever running. Yeah, and One Piece is still alive. So, so what would be if you had to say what would be the new big three? Um, probably Black Clover, My Hero Academia, and that's the only two I can think of. Well, I mean, One Piece, because One Piece is always there, so. Because One Piece will always be around. Like, I'll be 80 years old, it'll still be going. Yeah, I'm hoping that at least, um, My Hero or Black Clover gets dethroned by Jujutsu Kaisen, but I don't know if that's going to become long-running either. Like, that's the thing about the big three, right? The big three has to be long-running as well. It can't just be really good. Yeah, it doesn't have to be endless like fucking One Piece, but it does need to be long running like a Bleach, like a Naruto. Although Bleach way outstayed its welcome in my <laughs> in my mind. But. Yeah, but Kubo Tite got fucked over too by the um by the people who are making him make the anime. So mm. man, this sounds like an episode of the podcast we should do. <laughs> what happened to the big three? Why did they get fucked? Where are they now? Where are they now? But yeah, I'll I'll, I'll pass it on to you. What do you want to talk about here? All right, so. Ari Furuta from Commonplace to World's Strongest season two is dropping. Yeah. Now season one, I remember watching and being like, "Yeah, it's not terrible. It's not great either." Uh, it was animated by White Fox, and the biggest difference is that not only has like a year passed, but um, it's got a new studio. I'm assuming animating it because uh, it says it has two production studios: Asreed and um, Studio Mother. Asreed is still the same from White Fox, but. I did watch the trailer for um, Ari Fuerte Season 2, and it looks different. Like, it's completely not as harshly drawn. Like, there's, they don't have, like, big out- outlines. It looks a lot more Moe blob cute. And Would you say it's better? I honestly would say it's better because, I mean, I'm not a fan of the cutesy art style for Ari Fuerte. It's supposed to be more like, um, <laughs> in the promotional art poster for the season it still has the art style from the old studio from white fox so that's kind of funny where they have the more adult like drawing style but season two is definitely a lot more cartoony in my opinion but uh i i watched the preview and it i'm gonna be honest white fox i love you as a studio you guys don't do bad work (laughs) but holy shit did you fuck up our fuerte and their fucking fat like fight scenes like i don't understand how you guys can have such amazing visuals and, like, great camera work and shit like that, but just be absolute shit at battle scenes. <laughs> like, it blows my mind. I also like to point out, like, on any chart, because that's what I'm looking at for Aria Fuerta, like, it has a million tags. <laughs> like, why does it have... Is, it, is, it, is this literally just an anime that has everything in it? I mean, basically, it's OPMC Isekai Trash, but... <laughs> I like how one of the tags is software development. <laughs> kind of. Kind of. I don't want to spoil anything about the uh, the novel, but I didn't know software development was a fucking genre of fiction. <laughs> yeah, dude. Everyday coding in my new life with my elf waifu. Haven't you read my new light novel that I'm publishing? <laughs> you, you, you. I know you're saying that as a joke, but I guarantee you, there's going to be an isekai centered around that eventually. Uh, there's actually a bunch of isekai that do have like, oh, magic is just like coding, and I was a coder in oh, my previous my. life. So, God, yeah. <laughs> that is there no realm that Isekai won't tread on? No, I like it. <laughs> there's a fucking vending machine one. There's a pantu one. There's one where you're a sword that like girls rub themselves on and get off to. Like, it com- there's oh there's everything here. God. <laughs> so, uh, it looks really good. Like, I think it's gonna be a lot better. It's gonna do a better service to Arufurte because it is pretty action heavy. 
so that's a great thing that the action sequences don't look completely trash though hmm. i don't you don't see very much from the preview so we can only we wait with bated breath um everyone in the cast is returning the only thing that changed was i'm assuming the art studio because it's the only thing that's different now i don't know if people are willing to give this a shot because this is like isekai trash or not it's not isekai it's um they're transported to a different world they're not reincarnated is that isekai? yeah tra- isekai I mean, is it's transported. still isekai yeah. like i i know that i think isekai literally is supposed to be for reincarnations but i mean no it's no, the no, same no, no no isekai is transported to a different world it's um tensei i think is reincarnated like uh, that's why you say slime tensei I, it, it's it's still the same concept though yeah <laughs> appearing in a different world but they, I think they were hero. Yeah, they were hero summoned, right? I don't remember. <laughs> Who are you talking about? Slime Tensei or no? Ari Furuta. Oh wait, you oh, did you even right. watch it? I, I don't know. I haven't oh, watched the first I, season, John. I thought you did. <laughs> well, who am I? No, I haven't watched the first season. Well, the second season should be a Apparently, lot more hype because it's a lot more combat. So, a lot of people must be looking forward to it because it's like the third most like looked forward to thing on any chart. So yeah, for um winter twenty twenty two. Winter twenty twenty two. Yeah. Actually, on any chart, it says it's the second most popular. I wonder if that's because um, the... I, oh, my God. I almost said Mugen Train. The entertainment art uh, is oh, already airing, technically. Uh, maybe, maybe. Yeah, that that could be why. Any chart's weird. Anyway. and Yeah, any chart is weird like that. But yeah, um, Let's talk about something else to get super fucking hype over. Uh, okay. Well, let's talk about something else that's technically, well, not technically, it is currently airing. Um, so I, I talked about this briefly on the last um, season preview we did for fall 2021. And there was a lot of unknowns at the time when um, when I talked about that. And now that it's out, and I'm talking about JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 6, Stone Ocean, um, it, there's still some questions out there I do have. Um, so as of the time of this recording, and again, as of the time this actually this episode comes out to you guys, um, we have the first 12 episodes of Stone Ocean out on uh, Netflix. Um, they were all released on the same day on uh, December 1st of 2021. And we do know that in Japan, at least... Uh, it is going to be airing week to week on television starting the first week of January. Um, so, and not a whole lot more besides that has been said about the nature of how Stone Ocean is getting released. Um, so, Natai and I have actually talked about this, and we have a theory that I was going to throw out here. So, um, roughly a month before the show itself is going to start airing on um, Japanese television we have got the first 12 episodes. So that's a season's worth of of, of anime. So Natai and I think that at the end of the winter season, we're going to get another 12-episode dump of um, like the, the next 12 episodes in, in this part um, on Netflix. And then it's going to keep airing week to week on, uh, on television. And we'll get that until we have the full number of episodes out on Netflix. That's Natai and I's theory. Now, I'm, I'm putting that out. That's our theory. That hasn't actually been announced yet, but it makes sense based on what we've seen so far. Um, other than that, this, I've watched all 12 episodes so far. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> Bless David production. Yeah, I was actually very surprised that they released all 12 on the first day because I, I thought mm-hmm. they've been doing, uh, like, Komi-san Can't Communicate has been a weekly anime. Even for U.S. Mm-hmm. like distribution, it's been weekly. Which I was like, oh, that's cool. They're finally doing weekly anime distributions outside of Japan. But for Stone Ocean, they legit were just like, hey, yeah, here's your 12. And I was like, what? They're also doing it um, for another anime that's currently airing. Blue Period, I believe, is also being aired weekly worldwide on Netflix. Yeah, it's a weird model to like do the blocking. But I'm going to be honest. I like block-released anime. Like uh, when they did that for Relife. I believe it was the last time I watched that. Yes, block. they did do that for real life. I because listen, I think binging shit is the future because you know what happens when things air weekly. I fucking stop watching them because I can't watch all of them in one sitting. Mm. Like when you can binge I, every single episode, you can choose when to stop. You know, but if you try to watch everything weekly, it's like, do you have time to watch it right now? Not really. And then it just keeps piling up. And you're like, well, I don't really want to keep watching it. I'm like five episodes behind. I don't know if that's just a me thing. Maybe it's a everyone else thing. 
Like, <laughs> let us. I see it both ways. I see it both ways because there's some things I like to binge, and then there's other things I actually don't mind watching week to week. Um, but for this, like, I'm I'm kind of glad that it's this way, especially because Natai and I have plans to do um, spoiler casts for Stone Ocean. Um, this makes it really easy for us to block out how we want to do it, like how many episodes we want to talk about per spoiler cast. If they keep coming out in 12 or 13 episode blocks, that's how we'll do them. <laughs> And that's what we think. Like we think it's gonna like a month or so before um, the next season starts. So when does the the spring season starts? In what March, April, April? Yeah, April. Um, we're thinking that sometime in March, maybe not the first week of March, but sometime during the month of March, Netflix will drop the next twelve episodes of Stone Ocean. And a, a, a full episode count hasn't even been released yet, so we don't know how many episodes it is. If I had to guess, based on the length of the manga, plus the uh, the length of the or the number of episodes they had for parts five and four, I would say we're probably going to look at around the same number of episodes as part five. So I'm thinking anywhere between um, thirty six and forty two episodes, somewhere in that range. So I'm looking at the um, spring twenty twenty two release list Mm -hmm. there's at least three shows that i'm super fucking hyped for like uh otome game mob is fucking amazing i love reading that the light novel and the manga and uh, i'm talking about spring john i know but i'm just because you're (laughs) you're talking about spring i was like i wonder what's releasing and my adhd brain was just like oh my god look at this stuff that's so cool anyway i'm super hyped for spring 2022 (laughs) We're talking about winter 2022. <laughs> yeah, I. I mean that, that. I just wanted to to, to mention that. that like, I, I. We still don't know exactly how this release schedule is going to unfold. It just makes sense based on what we're seeing that that's how it's going to happen. And I absolutely love what I've seen so far. I. I do. I will say I was completely wrong about the uh, the ED. I was predicting that it was going to be Coldplay's Clocks. Uh, it is not. It is Duffy's Distant Dreamer, which is a great song, by the way. I don't know why you keep thinking it's going to be Coldplay. Like, is there is there a tie-in or something to it? I don't understand. Uh, because, like, the, the the nature of that song is very... It, it follows along with the actual theme of Part 6. Oh. I don't, I'm, I, I don't know anything end. about uh, Part 6, so... And I've, I've told this to Natai as well. Like, my only hope... And maybe... Because David Production has been changing it up. Like, with Part 5, uh, we got two EDs instead of just the one. Um... So that was cool. Um, I wonder if they just ran out of the license, the money for the license to keep the first song. <laughs> no, no, because I think that it was a strategic thing because they chose Freaking You, which is a great R&B song. Make no bones about it. But it would have been really jarring with like the second half of that going from like really hype, intense, dramatic fights. And then like the ED starts and it's like, I'm fucking horny. <laughs> I'm honey. <laughs> That's exactly the vibe that it gave off. And Modern Crusaders was a great choice for that uh, second half ED. And maybe with each of these blocks that we're going to be getting of 12 episodes, or however many it happens to be, maybe we'll get a new ED each time. I don't know. I hope so. Half the fun of being a JoJo's fan is trying to predict EDs at this point. (laughs) Not enjoying the actual, like, anime. It's predicting the EDs. (laughs) Yes. Maybe maybe you'll get Coldplay in the second half, man. Who knows? Maybe. Maybe. Anyway, that's it. That's all I got for for part six. I'm enjoying the hell out of it so far. So good job, David Productions. Bless you. Yeah. Any more JoJo's is closer to Steel Ball Run, and that's all I really want. We're one part away from Steel Ball Run, my friend. Oh, almost. Three more years, man. Three more. Mm. Actually, how long has it been since uh, part five aired and part six airing? Like a year and a half? Part five. When did part five end? I, uh... Let me look that up real quick. All right. Hold on one second. Well, while Alex looks that up, I'll talk about the uh, next anime for our deep dive section. The Genius Prince's Guide to Raising a Nation Out of Debt. Um, What can I say about this without spoiling the light novel and manga? <laughs> Good luck. Uh, so it takes place in a fantasy world where, like, there's kings and stuff. It's not based on any real location. Uh, there's this guy. He's a prince. He's a super genius, but also he's lazy. And he wants to not be prince anymore. So he decides, I'm going to raise the value of my nation so that way another nation will make me its vassal. And that's his entire prerogative. And it turns out that <laughs> as he ch- tries to like raise his nation to become a vassal, he kind of just starts taking over other nations <laughs> that fight with him. <laughs> and it's kind of just like, ah, shit. 
That's not what I wanted. Why are you guys so stupid? I made it so easy for you guys to win, and you fucking didn't do it. <laughs> and it's just, it's funny like that. Like, it's it's got a lot of political drama in it, but I'd say generally it's more of a drama. But it is cool watching, like, this serious prince, like, when or this uh, lazy, like, I want to slack off prince when he's serious. It's actually really cool. It's just, like, a good uh, dynamic, right? Where... You're watching a dude who's normally he's just like, oh, I just don't want to do nothing. I'm lazy. And he's just underestimated. And everyone thinks he's like the worst fucking or everyone thinks he's like the best fucking prince because everything he does is he's trying to make it so he doesn't have to rule the country anymore. So he like helps out the peasants and stuff. He's like, oh, if I help out the peasants, the nobles will hate me and they'll come and take my head. And it turns out the peasants themselves are like, oh, the king loves us. We'll overthrow those corrupt nobles for him. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and he's like, wait, no, that's not what I meant. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's done by, oh my god, where's the studio? Yokohama Animation Lab. I uh, I don't know what they've made. That's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Tawawa on a Monday. They made ta- fucking Chef's Kiss. Like that's the best anime. I, I don't need to watch Miru Tights. Holy shit! Do they just make hentai? Is that what they make? <laughs> wait, they they made Miru Tights. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh. oh, I see. <laughs> Get to Yobi Tawawa 2. Oh, they made season 2. Those are two very different things. <laughs> well, Tawawa on a Monday is uh, pretty decent. But, yeah, oh, that's cool. That's a cool animation studio. It doesn't look too bad, in my opinion. It looks like it's going to be... Funimation has the license for it, so... Good luck to everyone who's going to watch it who doesn't have Funimation. Um, yeah. Good luck Funimation not realizing what they bought and canceling it after three episodes. <laughs> So this isn't supposed to be lewd. There's not. Okay, hold on. I got three. I got to say that. I got to. But they don't know that. I got to zone through my uh my mindscape about is there any lewd parts to this? And I I don't recall anything lewd, like no like erotic bath scenes or stuff like that. So it's for the most part it's gonna be just like comedy and drama. <laughs> By the way, to uh, answer your question you had about JoJo's Part Five's airing, uh, it started in October of 2018 and ended in July of 2019. Yeah, so like three years. Oh, well, I guess two years. Two and a half years, right? Two and a half years. So cl- yeah. pretty close to three years, though. Yeah, because that's what I just took a random guess because I couldn't remember. But yeah, so I'll see you in three years when Steel Ball Run gets an adaptation and I'll watch that. <laughs> yeah, boy. <laughs> what's, the, what's the fucking quote? Oh, my God. Tell him to eat know, shit, <laughs> Johnny. <laughs> Oh yeah. What the fuck was? Tell him to eat shit, Johnny. Eat shit. <laughs> eat shit and die. <laughs> no, eat shit and fall off your horse and die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't wait for that to get edited. I really by the can't. Way. I can't wait for the fucking dub. Like I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna be so harsh on the people who do the English dub because I'm like, the fan dub was fucking hilarious and I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. So anyway, the genius prince. <laughs> That, that, that's all I got. It's I think it's something to to watch out for because it's pretty entertaining. It's not too much action. It's again mainly comedy and drama, and it, I don't know. It, it's a weird thing where I I normally like super action heavy things, but recently I've been getting into like things like a uh, realist um, hero kingdom where it's like it's only political dramas and there's no action. Though I guess I've always liked uh, Spice and Wolf, which is political drama stuff. So. All right, well, then I guess it's my turn. Um, so for the last one I actually do want to talk about for our, um, I guess, our in-depth section here is actually another uh, anime that I, I've already talked about uh, previously, but last time I talked about this for our fall 2021 uh, preview, this uh, I, I only talked about it very briefly in our rapid-fire one, and it got postponed. It was supposed to air... Um, the fall season of 2021 and instead got postponed to winter 2022, I believe because of production issues. Um, that doesn't sound or maybe good. because people started to realize what it actually is. Um, I don't know <laughs> who owns this. Crunchyroll uh, owns this. Stuff. Oh boy. Uh, yeah. Crunchyroll did get the license. This it is worlds in worlds End harem. I always want to call it world ends harem. But I don't know why uh, worlds end harem. Uh, yes. A, a, as the title would suggest, uh, there are going to be very much harem elements to this. Um, but the actual like story, and I talked about it before, is like this guy has a um, some kind of a disease or something where um, the only way that there's any kind of hope for him to 
get better is to go into like a cryo sleep or or something i don't know how that's supposed to work but whatever um and so he does and then when he wakes up five years later he realizes that the entire world something happened while he was out there was a, an outbreak of uh, a virus called the mk virus which mk stands for male killer and kills 99.9 percent of all men on the planet um so that means that for every five billion women there are five men <laughs> Yeah, you can see where this is going, don't you? <laughs> yeah, um, I'm so so. I know World's End Harem. It's been pretty big in the manga community. I believe it's yeah, it's based on a manga. And yeah, yeah. I do know that people were hyped for it. Like I remember people reading it and liking it, but I I don't like <laughs> like it's just fan service and like who's your flavor of the week like waifu right? Like I I don't understand this appeal because I don't know and anime whammon <laughs> like well okay <laughs> there's better waifus out there bro like you don't have to stick to these generic ass fucking waifus but i might be insulting a whole like it they might be really good waifus i don't know i don't know anything about it other than i remember the manga was popular and then i believe the manga is finished so um i don't know let's see i think the manga is 404 well that that's good news <laughs> oh shit can't find it i th- i'm pretty sure world's end harem has finished the manga so they Hopefully they adapt all of it, and I hope the people who look forward to this, because it's ranked really fucking high here on Annie Chart. Holy shit, number four? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think people are just kind of horny, don't you? <laughs> I mean, I get it, but what? There's much better yeah, shows I, on I this list. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I I listen I I don't I don't pretend to know anything. One thing I would like to know, yes, we mentioned that it has been licensed by Crunchyroll. I and I think there are going to be two different versions of this. There's going to be like a censored version and an uncensored version. Um I mean, I would hope so. I do know that on uh, in Japan, this is supposed to be airing on ATX. Though, so for those who don't know, ATX is essentially a um, a premium cable station on Japanese television. It's sort of like how in North America and, you know, the rest of the world we have HBO showtime things like that so that's where this is actually going to be airing in japan so they pretty much have free reign i guess to show all the titties and sex that they want so is atx like hbo (laughs) pretty much yeah it's it's that kind of like free reign that they have they're not they're not really beholden to like the standards of like your standard terrestrial television stations cool uh i'm not gonna watch it i'm pretty sure i'll see numerous fan art of all the girls i'm sure i'm sure that um i'm i'm very very sure that uh there's going to be a a wife of war over who's best in this probably i don't really care (laughs) i me either but that's not going to stop me from watching it because there's probably going to be titties in it okay all right well let's talk about a way better (laughs) i'm not saying i am the target demographic but i'm not saying i'm not either so you are like <laughs> what <laughs> sometimes saying anyway. nothing at all says all that you need to say you know <laughs> like, that's exactly exactly right you 100 percent right about that i cannot fault you in any way for that logic also i'd like to point out one last thing the um the, stu- <laughs> the studio that made this or is making this <laughs> the last thing they made was a uh the movie for kinero mosaic wow they're going so from what a, what a turnaround. super cutesy wholesome to like, yeah, we're going to just show tits and ass everywhere now. That's yeah. that's kind of nutty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess it's my turn now for my last uh, deep dive anime. She professed herself a pupil of the wise man. Um, mm. That's the English title. I'm not going to try to pronounce the Japanese one. So I know you hate isekai, Alex. But hear me out. But hear me out. <laughs> um, old sage warrior man, whatever. I don't. Well, I don't even remember what I do. The shorthand for this one is called. Does Does it have it here? The shorthand. What the... professed pupil of the wise man? Ugh, there's no shorthand. I usually refer to animes by their shorthand titles because it's easier to say than the fucking self-professed pupil of the wise man. <laughs> Some fucking I mean, mouth. The, the, the shorthand version. The shorthand version of the Japanese title is Kendenshi. All right, Kendenshi is about an isekai where a guy plays a VR MMORPG and then he like picks up a book and then he's like I wonder what would happen if I reincarnated into this video game as a girl and he plays this video game character called Dunbolf 
who is like a summoning wizard and he's like he he looks like Gandalf you know Dunbalf you get it come on yeah I get it that's real subtle there <laughs> but uh yeah so he reincarnates into the video game world but as a girl character and she's a cute loli and oh, oh that's all oh, I had to say my interest that's all I, it's a cute loli and she wears dresses and fights with her fists. Oh, you've piqued my interest <laughs> immensely yeah so this is kind of like gender bender um if you're not into that then probably stay away but I think it's really funny and wholesome, um, other than the fact that this is pretty heavy on the Yuri bait, in my opinion, because, you know, it is gender Ben and the main character, Dunball, for I guess his new character name is Mira. She is a, a little girl, and she's still technically a man on the inside, so there's a lot of like, Yuri baiting, in, uh, uh, in my opinion, but whatever. It's really cute, though, because there's, like, a bunch of animals, and the manga looks really fucking good. Like, I hope that mm. they take inspiration from the manga and when they because all you see in the PV is just like the character models and it's just like, yeah, it looks OK. But the manga itself is very fucking pretty. I don't I should probably look up who the manga artist is, but uh, it's a funny. I, I can tell you just looking at the studio that that is making this, they don't exactly have the best track record. Yeah, and watching the preview and looking at the character designs and stuff, it doesn't look as amazing as it could be. Which is a shame because it looks like they took inspiration from the light novel, which is mm. like the light novel doesn't look terrible, but it's pretty generic in my opinion. The manga looks way fucking better, and it's, that's just terrible. However, it's still a cute story, and <laughs> in the character banner on Annie Chart, you can see the, like the the town, the generic like isekai t- isekai town that we always see in all the anime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's literally just the circular walls and everything. Yeah, it's. Listen, the story is funny. Trust me. It's going to be cute. You're going to see cute animals. Story's funny. That's all I got. Like, <laughs> maybe you'll like it. Maybe I you mean, won't. You said Yuri Bait, and you also said Loli in a dress. So I am there for this already. Technically, it's supposed to be action, adventure, fantasy, but it's more closer to the slice of life, in my opinion. <laughs> it's just a fantasy esque slice of life, then. It's, that's what it sounds like to me. Yeah. There's also apparently a character called Kate Sith. Yeah. What a great name. Oh, my God. The, the little cat Kate Sith. Oh, it's so cute in the manga. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm wondering how cute it's going to be in the anime. I hope they make it super cute. I would be I would be very... Just a fucking moe blob. <laughs> yeah, like, this is one of those cutesy, like, uh, because of the story, it's not very heavy in anything. Like, it's not a heavy, dark story. There's, there's not a lot of, like powering up leveling up like this guy is like a top 10 player from the vr mmorpg known as dunball the, the great summoning wizard and he just reincarnates as a lowly that's that's literally it so he retains all his powers and shit so he's opmc and he kind of just explores the new world and that's that's mainly it it's all about the cute animals all right it's all it's about don't lie it's all about the lowly's guy no damn it, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, moving on, let's go into our rapid-fire segment. Um, I'll start with something, another anime that really needs an introduction, and thank God our long international nightmare is finally almost over, John. (laughs) Oh, Shingeki is almost upon us. Attack on Titan, the final season, the final season. (laughs) (laughs) Naruto, the the last movie, the last. The final movie, the last. Can I just say, what a fucking cock tease that uh, Studio Mava pulled off with calling it the final season and then putting a fucking to be continued on the last episode. Yeah, I know. I wonder if they did that on purpose. Like, they intended to split it into two cores or if it was a production issue thing. I don't know because I've talked about this. I mean, even as much as I hate Attack on Titan, which uh, it, watch our fucking spoiler cast, you'll find it exactly how much I dislike it. Um,. As much as I dislike it, Sho and I have talked about in the past how with um, the third season, you remember how the third season was split into two parts? Yeah. I'm pretty sure that was not the plan going forward based on where the parts like split. stop and start yeah. again. I'm pretty sure they got to a point where they realized that we're not going to be done with these episodes in time for them to air. So we're just going to say this is a split core anime now. I mean, it's a smart thing to do. Yeah, I I thought I always just based on where that split happens, I genuinely I genuinely do believe that the plan for season three of Attack on Titan was always for it to be you know 
I forget how many episodes total it was, like 22, 23. Um, I'm pretty sure that was the plan going forward. And then like halfway through, they realized, oh, shit, we're not anywhere close to being ready for airtime with these. But I think I don't know if that happened with the final season, too, um, because I feel like the where it left off on actually does feel like a good cliffhanger or what good quote unquote like it seems like a cliffhanger yeah i i don't know man i haven't watched any of the uh season four so i don't know uh, you don't have to <laughs> i finished reading it I, i've done my i've done my time I, yeah you've done you, you've done your part <laughs> i have to because when this finally airs we are i guarantee you going to be doing uh hopefully the last spoiler guest for attack on titan uh myself natai and show and um it's uh it'll be a happy day when that's over because <laughs> then for for from now from then until the end of time we never have to talk about attack on titan ever again a- unless unless the rumors are true there there is some speculation and i've heard a couple of rumors that the final season actually won't be the end of attack on titan because there there I, it's a rumor i can't confirm this but it's a rumor that like the fir- the final like 5 to 7 chapters of Attack on Titan's manga are actually going to be left off of the final season, and then those chapters are going to be made into a movie to finish out the whole franchise. I'm not entirely sure how they're going to put that into an entire-ass movie, because there's only maybe 30 minutes of actual plot that happens in the last five chapters, but whatever. I don't know that that the, again. It's a rumor. It hasn't been confirmed or anything yet, but I do know that's kind of going around that it's going to be. It's not the 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 end of the final season. Isn't going to be the end of the story. And with how much backlash there's been with the ending of the manga, even from Attack on Titan fans, I wouldn't be surprised if it's an anime original ending at this point. I'm really hoping to see what they do for the ending. I like I'd if anything, I'll watch the very like if they release a movie for the final episode or for the final chapters, I'll watch the movie. Hmm. I might watch the last episode or two of, of the season. I don't really care. Like at this point, listen, I think Mappa tried their best um, to capture Studio Wit's hmm. idea of uh, Attack on Titan. So good on Mappa yeah. for picking up the tab and doing their best. Uh, fuck all the haters. And uh, I can't <laughs> wait for this to fucking finally die. And in 30 years, people are going to look back and be like, man, that anime wasn't that great. That 30 years? I think within five years, people be like, people will start to view Attack on Titan like they do just your average seasonal anime. No, I think people are going to give it the, it's going to be the Death Note. It's the next generation of anime lovers Death Note. You know what I'm saying? Like the big anime to rule them all, mm. to, to have chained them into the otaku lifestyle. Like... I didn't even think about that. That's actually not a not a bad comparison. The reason I say that is because so back when I started getting into anime, Death Note was really popular. Like you you find Death Note merch at Hot Topic, right? Which is just a pop yeah. culture store. And Hot Topic now, when you go inside of there, you see a bunch of Dragon Ball Z and you see or Dragon Ball Super. Is that the new one? Uh, I think yeah. I don't know. I you don't see, keep up with that shit. You see a bunch of Dragon Ball merch, but you also see a bunch of Attack on Titan stuff. Like, there's so many people who know mm. what Attack on Titan is. Like, it's it's this generation's of anime watchers, Death Note, where it's just gonna yeah. be something people are gonna remember. Like, oh yeah, I got an anime because of this. It's gonna be it. Yeah, I've said I've said it before on our, our spoiler cast. Like, if there's one thing I can definitely credit Attack on Titan for, it's for getting a lot of people into anime. And you mentioned with Mabba, like, as much as I might dislike the story of Attack on Titan, I do have to give credit to Mabba because, like, they still got the same aesthetic that, that Studio Wit brought to Attack on Titan. They nailed it to a T, I would say. And it still looks and sounds good, so. Yeah, anyway. other than the uh, the CG, but the CG's always been bad. Well, People are lying yeah, to themselves. never going to look good. People the, are the li- Titans are never going to look good. See, the I, Titans are never going to be scary. Yeah, I mean, the Titans are hilarious to look at, to be honest. But I remember Mappa taking over. People were like bitching, like, "Oh, the CG! It looks so bad." I'm like, "Dude, fucking with CG looked bad too." I don't know what yeah, you're talking did you about. Watch the, did you watch any of the other seasons? <laughs> like all of the CG looked bad. Oh, the fuck you're smoking, man. <laughs> anyway, moving on. We've talked about this for far too long. Yeah, I know. It's supposed to not be a deep dive. What the heck? All right, uh, rapid fire round. Strongest sage with the weakest crest. So Shikukuman. Um, this is uh, 
it's not it's not an isekai technically speaking but the guy does reincarnate so this guy is like i want to battle the interstellar gods but i can't because i have a weak crest in this world there's four crests first second third fourth first is really fast at yes. casting spells but it's really weak fourth is really good for fighting so he's like i wish i had the fourth crest so i can fight interstellar gods so what does he do he invents reincarnation magic and reincarnates so now he has the fourth crest and he's on a quest to become more powerful so he can go fucking fight the interstellar gods. <laughs> That's literally the story. Now, so so literally weakling wants to fight space monsters. Oh no, he's not a weakling. His name is Gaia and he's like he becomes basically the world's strongest person in the world even with the weakest crest. But he was like he wasn't satisfied with being just the strongest in the world. He wants to be the strongest in the fucking universe and fight interstellar gods. <laughs> and I'm like I'm fucking down for it. Um, <laughs> there is a spinoff manga to this one where he doesn't reincarnate and instead he makes a different party and it's a lot more adult themed like it's well they're obviously adults in this one he's a kid but it's my problem with it is that it sets up for this thing where he's trying to get stronger to fight interstellar gods but they d- haven't shown anything of him fighting the interstellar gods yet but I'm I'm waiting for it's a lot of build up for that but uh, if you don't like OPMC this is not the one for you because Mate- Mateus, Matthias, Matthias, the uh, main character guy, he, he he's OP as shit. Like he he literally <laughs> just like yeah, I'm just gonna destroy everything. <laughs> Subjugation complete, and that's it. Like that's literally it. And everyone goes, <laughs> uh, Matty Kun, how did you do that? Nani. Yeah, that's. There's nothing else to say about it. Um, I don't think people are gonna enjoy it too much just because it is OPMC. It doesn't seem like he has a weakness. Uh, the animation for it doesn't look amazing it's jc staff and bless their hearts for trying to do their best but this is something i much it's very battle heavy so i would have preferred a better studio handle it but you get what you get the storyline's trash anyway (laughs) that is the uh that is the best way to describe uh jc staff especially over the last like five years just bless your heart (laughs) they try man they really do try like i as much as I, so like One Punch Man season two was picked up by JC staff, and they really tried to emulate the Madhouse style, art style by um. They were never going to. They were never going to. It's a lot of money and stuff, and they picked it up because they needed the money, I guess. But I, I don't think JC staff is very well known for combat oriented anime, but. He, you can't tell very much through the PV anyway. That's the thing about JC staff. They pick up this highly ambitious stuff and then like they try. They try really hard to deliver on it and it just always falls short. Almost always. I mean, there's a couple of instances where I actually think they did a good job. All right. Anyway. That's it. Um. All right. Well, the, the next thing I got, I can go through really quick. Um. A, an anime I didn't ever expect to see again. Uh, Skilled Teaser Takagi-san is coming back for a third season. Who the fuck saw this coming? Surely not I. Um. I, it, listen, if you like bullying and fucking big giant fucking forehead girls, yeah, this is the anime for you. Is Netflix uh, uh, picking it up? I don't know yet because I, I cannot see where anyone has picked this up yet. I do know that Netflix picked up the second season. This is one thing that really bugs me about Netflix. Okay, they they picked up exclusively uh, the second season of Takagi-san. Didn't bother to license the first. <laughs> like, hello? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know why they did it. And I can't find anywhere that say that said um, who's picked this up, at least as of the time of, of recording this. It is the same studio coming back. It's uh, Shine Animation. Um, and, like, all the cast is, is pretty much the same. It's it's Yuki Kaji and Rie, uh, Rie Takahashi. I mean, how can you fucking go wrong with this pairing? Like, really? Um, I'm super looking forward to it. Like I said, I wasn't expecting this at all when it got announced a few months ago. So I'm hype as shit. My uh, my my favorite forehead girl is back. Anyway, that's all I got for that. All right. Well, uh, how a realist hero rebuilt the kingdom part two. So last core last fall yeah fall season there was a uh, was it was it fucking yeah it was no summer my bad fuck I'm fucking it all up. So in the summer, uh, realist kingdom came out. Realist hero kingdom came out, and I was like, hey, it's pretty cool. You like um political stuff. Polit- political intrigue and not an OPMC, just a dude who's like kind of smart. Man, this is the anime for you. <laughs> and uh, I watched a little bit of it. I didn't hate it. I thought it was all right. Uh, I just like mainly. I like the storyline of just like he's just a guy who like gets hero summoned into the world, and mm-hmm. he's trying to fix this kingdom. 
but like he's not like an OPMC. Like he's he's commanding people and finding talent and showing people there's more worth to life than just your stupid feudal ways. And it's just intriguing to watch. I don't know. It's it's a nice rest from all the like OPMC stuff that I watch all the time. Maybe that's why I like it so much. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> but this is also JC staff too. Oh, bless their hearts. Bless their hearts. Good thing it's JC staff because there's not a lot of combat sequences in this. Again, oh, so it might actually look good. Well, it looks okay. Like, it looks okay. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, let's not get too ahead of ourselves, I suppose. Well, I mean, the character designs, they look pretty faithful to the source material or to the manga in mm-hmm. light novel. Um, I, I've got nothing else to say. It's part two, so I the only people who are picking it up hopefully liked part one enough that they're going to pick up part two. Yeah. Um, apparently it has been picked up by Funimation as well. So uh, there's that. Damn you, Funimation! Stop stealing my anime! God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I guess the next one I want to talk about is uh, it's called Sono Biske Doll Wa Koi Wo Suru. Uh, the English title is My Dress Up Darling. I fucking love um, this one. <laughs> so, so John, do you like do you like dolls? I like Yaru's. Do you like do you like creepy old dolls? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Where's his heading? I don't know. <laughs> well, that's basically what this uh, fucking anime is about. So apparently, it it focuses or it's centered around a guy who's kind of a loser, I suppose. But he has a really big obsession with like with what's labeled as traditional artisan dolls, um, and like that's what he does. He's got all these like talents for making these dolls and he's like super obsessed with them and people i think rightly believe that he's a fucking loser because of it um but one day he meets this new girl who's like super trendy and a a gyaru a gal um and he starts talking to her and finds out she has a great uh obsession with cosplay and this guy knows how to sew Guess what? You found someone you can leech off of to make your cosplay for you, girl. Yeah, it's pretty. Anyway, um, it's what it sounds like to me, based on the the preview I saw plus the uh, description I read. So I like gals, right? Like I love reading manga that have that feature gyarus. I don't know why I have this obsession with them. I just love looking at them and reading manga. Is that your type, John? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> So anyway, um, I read the first chapter of this manga, and it's not too terrible. I mean, it's just, it's a rom-com where a gyaru likes cosplaying, and she's like, hey, you make dolls, right? Can you fucking make me cosplay? And he just finds himself <laughs> in, like, erotic situations with this girl, making her cosplays. That's it. That's literally it. Uh, for my taste in gyaru manga, I don't like it this one too much. Like, I like uh, Yancho Gyaru Anjo-san, like, that type of gyaru. Or, like, again, Nagatoro. I thought Nagatoro-san was a Gyaru. That's why I picked it up. But it wasn't, and it disappointed me. So Disgusting. I cannot believe you've said this out loud. Yeah, well, get used to it. Anyway, any more gals in the market with more stuff? I'm all for it. Like, I, I just like gals. I don't know. It's a weird a fetish of so they, mine, I guess. <laughs> there you go, girls. If you're a Gyaru, hey, John's DMs are open. <laughs> they're not. My wife will kill me. <laughs> 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 anyway, that's all I got for this. So what do you got, John? <laughs> hey, man. Remember when Studio Dean was making gay-baiting anime? Do you remember that time that Studio Dean made uh, Initial D, third stage? Remember that time Initial D made Super Lovers? Initial D, <laughs> <laughs> Initial D made Super Lovers? No, that would be great. <laughs> so, uh, Sasaki to Miyano, um, it's about this... It's not about Mamoru Miyano, sadly. Sadly, it's not about Mamoru Miyano, but it is about a uke and a seme where the seme gets interested in the uke because the uke is like, oh, I look like a girl. Yikes. And then the seme is like. That only makes it better. Then the seme is like, oh, so you're so effeminate, huh? Nice. Get over here. (laughs) So that's literally it. Um, it's It's done by Studio Dean, so, you know. I'm like, hey, Dean. don't expect anything much. <laughs> Dean's going back to their roots, I guess. And going God. by this trend, we should get another Konosuba like anime in like another year or two. So, yeah, I mean, 
Studio Dean is one of those weird studios. It's like they're never great and they're never terrible. They're just like thoroughly in the middle and they kind of waffle back and forth between having good anime and really shitty anime. I mean, the the tags are comedy, romance, and slice of life. So I think it's just going to be your generic, um, what the fuck, shonen I Boys love. Yes. BL. Biru Eru. Yeah, it's just your rom-com BL. If you're into it, watch it, I guess. Bless you, Dean. You keep trying, and you keep failing. <laughs> I don't know. It looks kind of like... It's cute, but I don't know if it's up my alley, because it's kind of like... It's so... It's a stereotypical freaking boys love like setup. I hate that. Make it interesting. Reverse the, I don't blame you. <laughs> reverse the ukes and the semes. I know I'm going to get a, a lot, lot of hate for that. Everyone's going to be wow, like, what? how fucking... Excuse me. Excuse, well, I'll talk to you later. <laughs> Listen, I expect more out of BL, okay? It doesn't have to be the same thing every single time. Oh, but it does. God. All right. What's next? All right. So the next one I want to talk about is an anime coming out called uh, Kuroshi Ai. Uh, The English title is Love of Kill. And uh, this is a anime that's based on a manga that is still releasing. So take that for, for what it is. Um, essentially, <clears throat> excuse me. Essentially, this is about a, a, a bounty hunter and assassin and an assassin that are supposed to, I think, kill each other, and they end up becoming friends somehow. I don't know how that happens. Um, <laughs> but the story apparently revolves around these two pairing up to take down like uh, organizations that are trying to, to kill both of them. And there's, like, a whole amnesia subplot where one of them is trying to figure out their past. And I, I, it seems like they're throwing a lot at this. I don't know. It, I don't know if it can all work. Um, but it does kind of look nice. I, I watched the preview, and, like, the, the preview does make it look like it's nice. Um, and people do seem to be looking forward to this, at least. So, I don't know. It might be good. I'm kind of on the fence about this. I, I genuinely don't know if it's... It, somebody something i watch or or not um i will say that the studio that's doing this doesn't inspire me with a lot of confidence um they haven't really they they made devil's line oh boy <laughs> they made servamp oh boy <laughs> i know now you see my, my problem <laughs> i thought that the, the it was gonna be like a mr and mrs smith kind of deal so i was like yeah maybe it'll be cool but eh I've lost interest. Yeah, I mean, it's framed at least in the in the synopsis as assassin versus assassin. So, I mean, I, it seems like there might be something here, especially if there's like a mystery that the two of them are teaming up to solve. I mean, maybe there's something to it. Um, I do believe it has been picked up by Crunchyroll as well. So, um, there's that. I it's also got a psychological hashtag, so or a genre listed. So, um, ooh, we might get some torture. <laughs> okay. Like, I like how excited I sounded about that. <laughs> you're embodying show while he's not here. I know. I don't know why, but I am. But anyway, that's that's all I got for that. It it it's an interesting concept. I I have doubts as to whether it will deliver based on the studio that's doing it. All right. Well, uh, for my next rapid fire, I've got Requiem of the Rose. I keep wanting to say Queen, Rose King. Requiem of the Rose King, not Queen. <laughs> I don't know why I keep going Requiem of the Rose Queen. It sounds better, in my opinion. But uh, So this is a historical anime about the War of Roses and, um, oh, my God, Richard III. Yes. It's based off an early draft of Shakespeare's Richard III. So that's going to actually be pretty interesting. I thought it was interesting just because, like, it's a period anime. And I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. I like period animes. Like, it's historical driven and. Yeah, it's not based on an actual like event. It's based around a historical event, though. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> it's JC Staff again. So bless their hearts for picking up so. Many- and like half of your stuff you've talked about is being done by JC Staff. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I know they just pick up a bunch of fucking shit that I want to watch. I guess. Um, yeah, I I just thought it was interesting. I was like, what is this? Baro Ono Soretsu, and it's like Richard the Third, House of York, War of Roses, and I was like, hey, I know about that. I was like, that's kind of cool. I guess I'll watch it. Um, I think it's heavy into the gay baiting, but I, this is one of the themes of the the show, where Richard the Third is like apparently born as male and female, and he thinks he she 
he i don't know what they identify as he this person <laughs> this person identify doesn't know what they identify as and they think they're cursed and it's i've never like seen or read shakespeare's richard the third so i don't know how it's supposed to be <laughs> mm. but um ayakano the one who's writing this i believe uh definitely is gay baiting the shit out of this show uh, yes uh for sure <laughs> <laughs> just saying i there's there's no question <laughs> there's literally no question about that um no, nah, it's something that 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 show and I have talked about too about you know wanting to see more um, historical or period anime out there that aren't just based around like you know ancient Japanese samurai or something like that. Um, and this is kind of what I was talking about. I, I'll definitely watch this if for no other reason than like the fact that it's supposed to be based on you know Shakespeare's Richard the Third. I mean, I'm all here for it, and it's based around an actual historical event, the War of the Roses. Yeah, I think it's pretty cool. Also, Joan of Arc is voiced by Aoi Yuki, so 100% on board with this. <laughs> <laughs> or no, what, what's her? Jean de Arc, not Joan of Jean d'Arc. Jean d'Arc. Joan of Arc, or Jean. Yeah. Jean d'Arc. You get it. Yeah, you, you get it. You get it. You get it. Listen, some people don't understand that um, Joan of Arc is actually French, so. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know. All right, well, um, the last one that I have to talk about here is um, an anime called Orient. Um, that's racist. <laughs> maybe, but that's also the title. <laughs> also, I don't understand why people think that or- the word Orient is racist. It literally means East in Latin. I also thought it meant... Doesn't Orient also mean, like, to move something or something? Like, orientated? Well, you know, as a verb, Orient can mean to, like, align things, yes. Yeah. Uh, but Orient as, like, an actual descriptive word means eastward or eastern. Yeah, I know. I, anyway, I, I am of the Oriental that descent. Aside, <laughs> that, that bullshit aside. Um, and speaking of bullshit, like, as much as I want to like this because it actually does seem like there's an interesting concept behind it, it looks like such a generic shonen. It's not even funny. <laughs> so... Apparently, it, it, it's supposed to be about a, a dude who uh, has a father who tells him tales of, like, evil demons and stuff that prey on the innocent and warriors that defeated him. And, like, in his free time growing up, <clears throat> he practices, like, with swords and, and bows and arrows and shit and makes a, uh, uh, like, a pact with a friend to, to become the strongest in the world But uh, when they grow up. But the dude actually grows up, and the real world hits you hard when, you know... When you get, when you get into it, and it becomes like really cynical and jaded, and he's like essentially a um, a, a working class kind of d- guy. That's what he grows up to be. Um, and like the, the, the day comes when uh, fate forces his hand to actually try and be a hero. Like that's that's the whole setup to it. And like if that sounds generic, it's because it fucking is. Yeah, fucking um, snore, I will say dude. The, I, I will say the the preview does actually kind of make it look like there might be something here, um, but it just it just comes off as such a of a generic uh, shonen experience that I probably won't even give this the time of day. I will the the main character though is kind of cute. I, I I won't lie, and apparently the main girl is voiced by uh, Rie Takahashi. So I mean, there's two selling points for me. All right, well that's all you had to say. Like <laughs> Megumin voicing someone, like we're gonna watch it. Yeah, that you have to watch it. That's the law. That's the law. The law of Rie Takahashi. <laughs> if, if Rie Takahashi is voicing someone in an anime, you have to watch it. That is the law. <laughs> She's also my favorite DPS in Genshin. She voices um Hu Tao. Wow, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I love listening to Rie Takahashi voice Hu Tao. Anyway, that's I it's it, it looks and sounds like such a generic shonen that I had to bring it up. That's all I got for it though. All right, uh, so I guess you're entirely out of shows to talk about, but I've got two left. Oh, <laughs> overachiever. Uh, well, I tacked on one at the end because you told me to. So <laughs> I, I thought that you should talk about it because I know it's something you've seen. All right, so I don't really care about it, but uh, Re- Irregular at High S- Magic High Reminiscence arc, uh, It's I think it's going to be like an OVA because it's it's a volume of uh, magical Irregular at Magical High. It basically takes place in the past when Miyuki and Tatsuya first met like it's it's just 
the flashback arc and explains a bunch of backstory stuff. It's like watching No Game No Life Zero. It's one of the arcs where it's mm-hmm. like this happened in the past and just explains things. I mean, if you're again, this is something that if you're not into watching irregular and magic high i don't see why you would want to fucking watch this it's going to be done by 8-bit so it's going to look like what 8-bit's been doing to it um like which again doesn't look terrible like it's the same people from madhouse it's just their 8-bit productions now instead they're doing it uh so that's that and, you know you all what you've said about this it does make me wonder why it's listed as a tv because if this is actually just an adaptation of what like a single volume you said right yeah I don't know how they're going to spread that over multiple episodes unless it's going to be like an OVA series. that's like three or four episodes long, perhaps. I don't know, but it's listed as TV. So it's got to be airing on TV somewhere. Um, I don't know. I, I was reading some other sources saying it was going to be like a 90 minute, like movie. So, uh, maybe it'll be like a three episode TV series, like a mini series or something. Then I don't know, but it, it, according to Annie Chart and I think Mal as well, this is airing on TV. So I, I don't know. Take that for what it's worth. I guess it doesn't have an episode count listed, but yeah, everything's. I don't know how they stretch it out into a full last twelve episodes, but whatever. <laughs> It, I'm, stranger things have happened john listen there's another anime i'd rather talk much more about and that's slow I think loop you should. slow loop hey man you like fishing you like cute girls doing cute things man did you like you do camp did you like euro camp you want a really like dumbed down version of your no that's not dumbed down version you want a similar experience to euro camp man you should watch slow loop uh this is a I don't know why I was just looking through the list and I was like, slow loop. That's a weird fucking name. And I clicked on it and I watched the preview and I'm just like, okay, it's just cute girls doing cute things. Like there's a girl that's like, and then he saw fishing and he was hooked. I mean, no yeah. pun intended. I thought originally I thought it was going to be about fishing. I was like fishing the anime. You had me lollies fishing in anime. Like say no more fam. You had me at fishing. That's all you had to say, bro. <laughs> lollies fishing. I am taking my pants off now. <laughs> yeah. Like, whoa. <laughs> Done by Studio Connect. Um, I don't know what Connect has done. I let's find out. Strike what the Blood Final. Um, Strike the Blood. Strike the Blood. They they really like working on Strike the Blood. <laughs> Strike the Blood. Monster Strike. Chaos Dragon. Strike the Blood. <laughs> so from the studio that brought you Strike the Blood, they decided to do something completely different. Instead of, like, action-based, they're going to go make a fucking slow-life anime. Oh, they also did uh, Oriski. I didn't I didn't realize that. I don't know. Um, what... Are you the only one who loves me? I don't know what that is. It was all right. I mean, it was from uh, it was from the fall of 2019, and I, I thought it was all right. Well, any chart fans would agree with you, because it's got a 70%. Um, it's, uh... I know a lot of people were making fun of it when it came out because the main girl in that actually looks like the the heroine, quote unquote heroine from um, what's that hentai that everyone goes batshit crazy for? Um, Metamorphosis. Metamorphosis. Yeah, she literally looks like the main character in that. That's anyway. Hilarious. Enough of that tangent. Slow, uh, slow <laughs> loop. It looks looks fucking awesome. Uh, I will be a slice of life. I'll be watching. Yeah, I mean, I kind of wish it went full on like it's just about camping and fishing that would have been really cool but i guess euro camp is already there for camping so yeah i mean and you know you, you compare it to yudu camp like that's that's a tall order because yudu camp is like one of the new gold standards of slice of life now you realize that right listen i don't watch slice of life anymore man wow <laughs> I, I don't watch like anime anymore <laughs> it to, it, it's like comparing it to kaon as well like i mean kaon is like this gold standard of slice of life and i think yudu camp is right up there with it yeah, I don't know if um, this is if the anime is going to center around fishing, but it does have fishing in it, and it it seems like it has a story driven element to it too. Like, so the what main it has John girl, is cute girls doing cute, doing cute things. Fuck, that's all you had to what say. What else do you need? I mean, there's a story arc and stuff, but yeah, it does have a seinen tag, which intrigues me. Yeah, that's kind of weird. I don't know why it has a seinen tag. It's, I, I guess fishing I'm is a manly now, sport. I, I'm, I'm gonna. I don't know because I haven't read whatever this is based off of a manga. I believe. I'm gonna make a prediction. Why that Saiyan tag is there? One of these girls in this show has like something that truly traumatic that's happened to her in the past, and it's gonna be explored through fishing. <laughs> 
So and it's gonna be no, it's gonna be it's gonna be like like fucking dark. I think too. That's my prediction. I mean, in the synopsis, it just says yeah. So a girl is upset that her um her family is remarrying, so she's there to go fish because her dad who died taught her how to fish. That's there. There's your sentence tag. My dad taught me to fish. I love fishing in the mountains. I'm gonna go to the mountain and explore. That's literally <laughs> it. She meets another girl um, there, and they they fish and become friends. And it turns out that's her new stepsister. So, what are you doing, stepsister, with that fishing step, rod? Stepsister, what are you doing with that strap? I mean, fishing rod. <laughs> I think it looks cute. I'm gonna give it a shot just because, again, I like fishing. So I watch an anime. I'm hella gonna give this a shot just because it's got cute girls doing cute things and fishing. Fishing is awesome. Y'all should fish more often. Just saying. All right. Well. Anyway, that's it. That's, it. that's all we got, man. Yeah, we've covered at least half of the fucking season. So. Yeah. Um. So that's it. That's our that's our preview for uh for winter twenty twenty yeah winter twenty twenty two. God, I can't fucking speak. It's like I'm having a stroke. Um, I. There were a couple of things we didn't talk about, like that apparently some people were looking forward to. I don't know why some of you out there like Princess Connect Redive, except that the characters have big tits. I mean, that, I guess that's a good reason, good enough a reason as any to watch to like uh, an anime. I think um, honestly, I think Princess Connect Redive is only popular because they did really good in their marketing. Like they got a bunch of the um, Home Alive girls. Uh, yeah, they've gotten a bunch of YouTubers to to market their game for sure. Yeah, like. I think it was Hololive, the girls from Hololive that were marketing it, but I think that's why it's popular, to be honest. <laughs> I mean, you know, the, the 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 studio that's making this is Psy Games Pictures. I mean, all credit to Psy Games. One thing they are really, really good at is marketing their properties. Like, I'll give them that. But anyway, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, end it here. So thank you all there for dropping in to listen to this uh, preview of the Winter 2022 season. Also, uh, before we do go, I want to say thank you all for listening this year, since this will be the last episode that goes out in 2021. Uh, We definitely look forward to bringing you more great stuff throughout the uh, 2022 season. throughout 2022 i don't know why i said the 2022 the Um, 2022 experience the the are you 20 to the 2022 (laughs) hopefully it's a better year than 2020 that's all i got to say um you just skip over 2021 (laughs) well 2021 was kind of a take it or leave it kind of year to be perfectly honest yeah i mm. (laughs) Mm, indeed Mm, is the only way i can think to describe 2021 i really wish i could disagree yeah, me too. I'm, I'm ready for things to be better so I can disagree. <laughs> um, but anyway, check the description below to find links to Anime Club, After Dark, on Twitch, on social media, and on Discord. Check out our merch store and our affiliate links as well. Any purchases you made there do really, really help us out. With that, I have been your host, Alex, and I will see you next year. Say goodnight, John. Happy New Year! Come on!